What's up, sports bettors? We've been cashing like crazy on Underdog Fantasy, so, you know. We had this a few days ago on the Odds Jam YouTube. Here were two plays, three pick entries, where I turned 1,000 into 6,000. So what we're going to be doing today is hopefully running it back. I have a ton of player props on Underdog Fantasy as well as prize picks. And again, I recommend getting both platforms, right? These platforms, they don't have the exact same betting lines. So sometimes there will be value on underdog fantasy and super profitable picks. Sometimes there's a bunch of good picks on prize picks. You never know where the value is going to be. So as an example, one of the first plays I ended up going with is Kevin Hayes over two and a half shots on goal. This one is on prize picks. It's not on underdog fantasy. And you can see when I filter for these two sports books on the odds jam positive EV tool, you know, this is the most profitable play with a 2.4% profit margin quantified mathematically, right? So why do we like this play? It's pretty simple. Odds jam is pretty simple. There's no BS. Unlike all these handicappers who are like, oh, you know, LeBron's girlfriend, his thumb, they act like they have some inside information that's not already priced into the market. Like the whole world already knows about LeBron, his drama, Tom Brady's divorce. It's priced into the market. There are millions of people betting on the NFL. The sports books know Tom Brady got divorced. Anyways, first play is Kevin Hay over two and a half shots on goal. So the reason it's so easy and possible to make money sports betting, day trading sports, is all of these bookies set lines independently. They all try to do it independently, right? If all books had the same odds, we wouldn't need a bunch of sports books. But FanDuel, MGM, DraftKings, Bet Online, Pinnacle, they all try to do it independently. So what you'll notice is, hey, Kevin Hayes, over two and a half shots on goal, minus 154 odds on Bet Online, a very sharp offshore sports book. This is this odds jam column is just the same as Pinnacle sports book. Pinnacle is known to be the sharpest bookmaker in the world. So another very sharp offshore sports book. They have this at minus 159. I filtered it out in my settings, so I'll have to add it back in, but minus 159. So, you know, BetMGM minus 125. So BetMGM is less bullish on the over, but you can see in general, most sports books are like, you know, probably an average of minus 150 on this play, 1.5 to one favorite, 60% favorite. And we're getting it at minus 119 in our prize picks entry. That seems pretty good, right? Now the next play, from the EV tool, it's on underdog, but it's not on prize picks. So this is the first play I have on underdog. Same strategy, looking for value. All the sports books, not really any disagreement. They all have Jordan Poole over three and a half threes as a heavy favorite around minus 150. You know, you treat every sports book as an independent data point of where the line should be set and you hunt for value. You know, if, if Curry's out, the sports books will price that in almost immediately. This is a market. A CEO dies. It's priced in to the price of the stock very quickly, right? People are looking at this information. If Mark Zuckerberg, you know, says something that is reflected in Facebook stock, it's no different with sports books. These sports books invest millions of dollars into their ability to set lines, right? They have traders. So what we're doing as a sharp better is we're hunting through this market, looking for those rare few inefficiencies where we can actually have an edge. And on underdog, the first play is pool over three and a half made threes. So essentially, Odds Jam is just saying, you know, out of the millions of odds, kind of across sports books, tens of thousands are on prize picks, underdog, all these sports books. Just point out to me, you know, where the value is. Mathematically, no BS. That's what Odds Jam does. And then it just tells you your profit margin. So that's the EV tool. So we have pool over three and a half threes. That is my first play on underdog. So we have one on prize picks, one on underdog. And again, like there's a lot of ways to skin the cat. I say this all the time, but it's free to browse odds on Odds Jam. So what I like to do sometimes is just scan through the market and look for inefficiencies, right? So here, for example, it's like, hey, prize picks an underdog for James Van Remdesek they don't have the shot on goal line set at the same level. Prize picks is at two, their direct competitor is at two and a half. Seems like an interesting play. Maybe there's value on underdog on the under, on prize picks on the over. 
Like that's how you want to think as a sharp better. You're looking through the market, treating every sports book as an independent data point of where the line should be set, and you're hunting for value. So I'll give you another example of a play I'm on. RJ Barrett, right here. So this is from the odds jam screen, under six rebounds. Um, and you can see all the sports books and underdog, they have the line at five and a half. Granted, FanDuel slightly juiced towards the over, right? Pinnacle slightly juiced towards the over for RJ Barrett over five and a half. But when all the books are setting the line at five and a half and prize picks is at six, that's typically something you want to take note of, right? Like you want to take the under. In this case, if we take RJ Barrett under six rebounds, if he has exactly six rebounds, we're going to push on prize picks. Anyone who bets on underdog, the sports books, they're losing because they bet under five and a half, right? So that's kind of the main difference between the EV tool and the odds jam screen. So the EV tool is great because it points out plays like this, right? Here's another one on underdog that I went with and another one on prize picks, DeMar DeRozan under five and a half rebounds. As you can see right here, it's like, oh, you know, Anze Kopitar, his shot on goal line on the sports books and on underdog fantasy is two and a half. So all Odds Jam is doing is comparing the lines or the odds, I apologize, four bets at the same line, right? It's um, you're comparing apples and apples. These bets are exactly the same, right? Like right here. So essentially Odds Jam is just saying you have one, two, three, four, five, six sports books, all telling us this is worth roughly 145 bucks. You know, they're all at the same level and you can buy it for 122 on Underdog Fantasy. Does that sound pretty good? And you're like, yeah, all the sports books have this minus 145. I can get minus 122. Seems like a no brainer. So the EV tool is comparing the odds, the price, right? These are bets that are graded the same way. You know, like Jordan Poole over three and a half threes, that is the exact same bet if you place it on FanDuel or DraftKings. If this guy has four threes, it wins. If he has three or less, it loses. It's like if there were, you know, hundreds of prices for a stock, it wouldn't make any sense. So what we're essentially doing is this is, that's essentially what sports betting is in the United States and Canada with all these different sports books, is it's like you have a hundred different stock exchanges and it's like, okay, BetMGM says this pool stock is worth 155 bucks. FanDuel says 146. Caesar says 157. Unibet 137. DraftKings 150. So you're getting all these opinions from these sports books that are sophisticated. They're investing hundreds of millions of dollars into their trading technology. They also take tons of bets, right? This is a market. Lines are moving around. Sharp action comes in. Lineups change. Everything is reflected in the odds. You know, sports bettors' opinions are reflected in the odds. In the same way, the price of GameStop, it moves around due to supply and demand. If everyone in the world starts betting on pool over three and a half threes, these lines will move from minus 150 to minus 170 to minus 180, as long as people keep betting it, right? Supply and demand. Sports books just wanna make their spread, they're vague. So sports betting is just like the stock market, but we have dozens of stock markets. So we have dozens of prices for the exact same stock. So that's why the EV tool is the main tool I like to focus on. Here you can see my play on DeRozan as well. But what's cool about the screen is it's not as clear cut the formulas, like you can't back out your edge. Like it's very easy to back out your edge or profit margin here on Odds Jam. The EV tool will do that for you. But here you're not comparing apples and apples. These aren't the same bet. RJ Barrett under six versus RJ Barrett under five and a half. So we're kind of looking at the sports books and being like, wow, they all have the line at five and a half. We can get under six. They don't really have the over five and a half super heavily juiced. Seems like under six has some value. Also considering underdog, the direct competitor to prize picks is at five and a half, along with all the sports books, that gives us more confidence, right? We're looking at more data. We wanna see more sports book odds. More sports books setting the line at five and a half increases our confidence that under six on prize picks is a market inefficiency and a bet we want to be on. So that's a play I went with, right? Next play I ended up going with is right here. Josh Morrissey, under two shots on goal. So this is an NHL play. All the sports books, underdog fantasy, have the line at one and a half. Granted, juice towards the over again, 
But the jump from one and a half to two shots on goal is massive, right? We're not talking about an NBA spread or point total, you know, 220, 220 half. We're talking about 1.5 to two. That's a huge jump in the distribution. Like you can see a lot of these lines, you can see here, like, you know, sometimes when sports books have the lines set at different levels, the over three and a half is minus 134. The over four and a half is plus 116. So like these are big jumps in the odds right? So 1.5 to 2 is a massive jump. So being able to get under 2, again, underdog fantasy has their line at 1.5, which makes us really like this. All the sports books have the line at 1.5. Seems pretty good, right? So I ended up locking in these plays. Underdog fantasy gives me a max bet of $250 when I include a hockey player. So this is what I have. From the EV tool, from the EV tool, this was from the screen. Caruso over five points, which is actually pretty hilarious because we had him under six and he had five points um, a couple of days ago for a 10.5K win. So that was pretty awesome. And then on prize picks, I have a six pick flex play. RJ Barrett under six, two shot on goal plays, three shot on goal plays, four shot on goal plays. DeMar DeRozan under five and a half rebounds. And let's make some money, guys.